So since there's no UFC on this weekend, you may be sitting there wondering to yourself, what MMA are you going to watch this weekend? And I've got a few solutions for you. And I'm going to be talking about them all in this event here. I've got uh, in this video, not this event, but I've got uh, quite a few cards, man. I think I've got about eight, nine, ten cards that I'm going to be talking about really, really quickly. It's going to be a fast video because it's almost midnight where I am right now. I've got work at 7:30 tomorrow morning, and uh, yeah, I had a busy, busy afternoon after work, so I didn't really get around to making a video. My PFL predictions will be out tomorrow. But speaking of the PFL card. Uh, that's on this weekend, it's on this Friday night in the US time, I believe it's on during the day, Saturday, my time, but, um, yeah, PFL 10 is one of those cards that you probably don't want to miss, it's on a pay-per-view for $50, personally, I don't think it's it's worth the $50, so maybe, um, you can find another means of sourcing that, I won't say too much about that, but yeah, I'm gonna be uh, looking forward to the card, I think it's gonna be very interesting, I'm actually looking forward to an amateur fight, which is pretty rare, Biagio Ali Walsh, actually Muhammad Ali's grandson's gonna be on the card, as well as a lot of very good fights, to be fair, Rob Hawkinson versus Akhmedov will be good, Marlon Moraes comes out of retirement, Jeremy Stevens is on the card, Gleason t -Bell's on the card as well, it's just gonna be a good all-round card in my opinion, also Aspen Ladd is on it as well, but I don't want to talk about the cards too much in depth, let's just run through them and let you know what options you've got so friday night us time you've got pfl 10 championships but you've also got a uh, one fc as well which take place in asia so maybe it's not a prime time i think it is this is actually prime time for, for usa fans out there and if you don't know what one fc is they're a massive promotion out in asia arguably the second or third biggest promotion and they don't just do mma they do kickboxing they do muay thai and I will tell you one thing, man. I've been watching one one FC for not too long, but I have been following it, and I have never seen a boring Muay Thai or kickboxing fight under the one FC banner. These are really fun, and you've got Hiberto Soldic, a guy which the UFC should have just forked out mega dollars for. Going to be making his debut for one FC, a guy that was in KSW, two-time champion in KSW, two weight division, twenty and three record. Pretty young guy, twenty-eight years old. The best unsigned prospect at one point. The UFC missed out on him, Bellator missed out on him, 1FC have forked out the big bucks, and I think that Roberto Sol Soldic's going to take the O off Murad Ramazanov here. Roberto Soldic's so good, it's just a massive shame that uh, UFC didn't pick him up, but we move on from that. We've also got another 1FC, event on Pacquiao versus Brooks. This isn't at primetime USA time, it's on uh, more primetime Asian time, I believe, or wherever it is being held in Singapore. And... Uh, Pacquiao vs Brooks, this is a massive event, Jared Brooks and uh, Joshua Pacquiao, two of the best flyweights in the world in my opinion, both of them would fit very well into the UFC division, Jared Brooks actually a former UFC fighter and I believe he was cut when they were doing the purge of potentially cutting the entire weight class. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think Jared Brooks is a great fighter. He's got a lot of good, good wins on his record and he's going to be fighting for the 125 pound um, bout against Joshua Pacquiao who is uh, on, a, on a decent win streak himself, you know, and I think Jared Brooks is going to win it here. That is a pretty common pick, but Jared Brooks, he's just a great fighter, man. I, I really wish that we could see this guy maybe in the UFC again someday. I'm not too sure if we do see that happen because I think there is a little bit of a grudge there because they cut him when they're approaching the whole weight class, but hopefully we can see Jared Brooks in the UFC. I've got a couple of boxing cards as well that are going to be very good. Dillian White versus Jermaine Franklin is going to be a pretty massive fight. Jermaine Franklin at one point was one of the best prospects, and then he kind of dipped for a couple of years, and he's come back against not the best competition, fighting Dillian White. It's just a big... It's just a big event, man, and uh, I think Dillian White is going to win it. I think it's, once again, it's just a card that you might enjoy watching, a boxing fight. If you're into boxing, if you're not into boxing... It's a good excuse just to watch some fights, you know what I mean? Because there's no UFC on, so that's kind of your option. You've got Zapita versus Progress, two guys that I'm not as familiar with. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a big boxing fan. I'm not going to pretend like I know who every boxing prospect are. But this should be a pretty major fight. It is a title fight, which um is pretty cool. Once again, not going to pretend like I know everything about boxing, but it's there. UWC40, a fighter that I do know a little bit about here, Adrian Luna Martinetti. You may recognize the name Andres Luna Martinetti. That's actually Adrian's brother. And Andres fought on Dana White's contender series and lost. And um, Andrian has uh, got a pretty padded record like his brother does. And uh, he's taking a step up in competition here against Donnie Matos. But this Donnie Matos fella, 25 and 10 record. He's not fighting good competition either. Like, he recently lost to a good opponent. Before that, he's been a debuting guy, 4-1 guy, 6-8, and 0-1. And and with all that experience, he should be fighting better competition than that. 
A good step up in competition for Martinetti. I think he gets it done. You might see this guy in Dana White's Contender Series next year. You saw his brother on Dana White's Contender Series this year. You might see him next year on the Contender Series. Now we move on to Eternal MMA 72. This is a pretty good card, especially for the Australian regional scene. The Australian regional scene at the moment is buzzing. You've got big names like Jack Della Maddalena. You've got Jake Matthews coming up. You've got Jacob Malkoon coming up. You've got Rob, Robert Whitaker at the top. And uh, there's a lot of really good fighters coming up out of Australia. And I'm going to highlight a few of them, man. Tom Nolan is a great prospect. He's a very young guy. He's taking on Adam Cook, who I believe is an older guy. Uh, he hasn't fought too much recently. He's got a really nice record, though. I think Tom Nolan's going to win, even though he's like a little bit of an underdog on the tapology odds. I'm uh, looking forward to that. Six foot two at 155 as well with a very long reach. He's a very thin, slim guy, but I think he should be able to get it done here. He's a pretty decent fighter. Josh Kune versus Abdullah Biada. Abdullah Biada is six foot three at 145 pounds. If this guy can get a few wins together and really make something happen, you could see this guy maybe being a problem, especially with his size and the weight class. He fights pretty often as well. I saw him lose to Diego Pajaya about over a year ago, and then that was the first fight I saw of his. And I think I covered it on the channel as well a long time ago. But since then, he's been fighting on uh, smaller scenes. He's got a winner of Jesse Medina, who's a pretty solid fighter on the regional scene. And Josh Kune, 3-0 with three KOs. 3-1 uh, with 3 KO, sorry, and then he went to war with Dimps Gillies, who's a pretty decent fighter despite his record. And it was a war. It was a great fight. Um, Josh Cooney's very powerful puncher, Abdullah Blader. Doesn't have the best ground game in the world, but I think Blader, if he can use the range, he might be able to outpoint Cooney. I think Cooney's been slept on, though. Maybe he could get a KO. It's just going to be a fun fight, and it's just something to really look forward to, in my opinion. Justin Van Heerden, as well, is a very underrated fighter, maybe... Maybe, if you see this guy get a win, you might see him on UFC 284 making his um, UFC debut. He's really turned his career around. 4-1 and one in the last uh, five fights. His one loss coming to Rod Costa, which has aged very well because Rod Costa is a very good fighter. And he beat Muhammad Alavi, who was a 7-0 at the time. I think this is a step down in competition for Justin Van Heerden. I think we're going to see him get the win, and I think he's going to win. Um, the title for Eternal MMA. Maybe he gets signed to the UFC. He doesn't have the prettiest record in the world, but he's really turned his career around. As for the main event, it's uh, it's it's okay. It's not it's not as good in my opinion as the co-main, but uh, I think John Martin Fraser he won his last fight against Matt Myers, and now they're going to be fighting again. Maybe it was uh, controversial or something like that. But uh, we move on. Uh, FCR 14's on. And it's taking place in Sweden. Personally, not really an a, a organization that I really heard of. But I saw it's going to be taking place on um, UFC Fight Pass. And Andreas Berg Gustafsson, I had to search out if this guy was uh, related to, to Alexander Gustafsson. And unfortunately, he's not. But he's still a pretty good prospect. 6-1, and one, he lost to a guy that was 4-3 and three two years ago, making a return. And he does have good wins on his record before that. I think he should win the matchup here. I mean, it's an interesting fight. Apart from that, to be fair, the card isn't really loaded with many crazy good fighters. I mean, maybe if you want to pick out someone else, you've got Bilal Tupsayev uh, out of Sweden. I mean, I know that the UFC is looking to sign Swedish fighters because they wanted to put on a fight night in Sweden. So UFC's probably potentially got their eye on this card for Gustafsson and Tupsayev. I wouldn't say you can see them in the UFC anytime soon. But I will say... The UFC is definitely looking at Swedish fighters, considering there were rumours that they were going to put on a card in Sweden. Icon FC, there's an event on this weekend for Icon FC, no tapology page, I can't tell you about it. And same sort of thing, Battlefield Fight League has got a, pay, a, a fight card on it this weekend, and there's no tapology page for that mate either, it's called BFL75, there is a title on the line, and uh, that's all I know. Uh, Fury versus Chisora, when is that taking place? Is that on this weekend as well? That is on this weekend too. Tyson Fury is fighting Tarek Chisora for the third time, I think, and he's already beaten him twice, so... You know, like, he, I think he's going to win. Daniel Dubois as well is a very good uh, prospect. Um, yeah, interesting that uh, Tyson Fury is fighting someone he's already beaten twice. But that's what it is. Uh, I think it's somewhat short notice matchup as well. I don't think this was um, announced all that long ago, but that's also on this weekend. Very fast video, almost 10 minutes long. A lot longer than I want it to be, sorry. I tried to rush through it. I'll see you in the next one um, tomorrow. Alright, thank you. See ya.